so we haven't done a video in a little bit and we're not exactly at a milestone point in our progress but we wanted to just give you guys an update where we're at and let you join us in the shop today and follow along with what we got going on it's gonna be a little bit more of a vlog style video different format than what we normally release but we thought it might be interesting so let's check it out I've been glued to the CNC machine the last couple of days with the redesign of the engine mount and the forward nose strut. We've had to remachine a lot of parts. Right now I'm machining out some work holding to create some of the parts that we need. So it's this uh, process of making the fixture and then making the actual part. So it's a little bit of back and forth. So What's the big hammer for? Big hammer is for making sure the parts fit together. <laughs> no, it's for getting the uh, work holding out of the machine. They get a little bit uh, seized up, so you just give them a little tap and they, they pop right out. So this week I've been working on trying to get this instrument panel prepped for making the remaining holes we need to install the last components before we do some flight testing. To do that, I printed out the stencils for the remaining components, kind of one-to-one -one scale, using just regular printer paper. And uh, I've got that set up here like this. So um, one thing we wanted to do to kind of set the drill up, you know, you got these holes lined up here in the right spots, but um, I've noticed that when you drill in, into the sork, the uh, drill bit can kind of wiggle a little bit just because of the nature of uh, the hard and softness of the material. So we have uh, these MDF stencils that will kind of help align the drill bit as it's going through the sork. So I've got that all set up here with these clamps over top the paper stencils. Or a drill my, fixture, I guess, right? Yeah, drill fixture. That's a good way to put it. So um, I've got everything set up right now for the remaining holes I want to do. we got our switches for the ECUs and fuel pump starter switch. Uh, we've got the hole for the Airmaster prop controller and the LED indicators for our landing switch. So I think we're just about ready to go. Uh, I ran into a little snag here, so I used these bits to uh, create the holes for my stencils that I'll be using to guide the power drill into the actual holes I want to drill on the instrument panel. These bits are made for a CNC machine, and they're just a little bit too wide for this Milwaukee tool drill. So you can see there, they don't fit. That means I need to make a quick trip to Home Depot. So. I'll be back in a second. Uh, I just got back from Home Depot. Uh, we've got now our 1532nd bit and our 2764th. So these will work with our power drill. They fit just fine. We're ready to start making these holes. A whole bunch of different projects going on in the shop today. River's been working on his instrument panel cutouts. Keegan's doing a bunch of work on the Tormach, and I've been doing some drawings over here. I'll tell you more about those later. Uh, we're gonna jump over to the Tormach to see Keegan machining some of these parts, uh, specifically the lower drag links. I'm gonna isolate those so you can see them in the nose gear assembly. So these little guys, there's two of them, left and right half, but they're basically the same part. You just flip them around. So let's see how those are coming together. All right, so it's doing the roughing. Sorry, oh. <laughs> it's doing the roughing passes right now, and I have these little, essentially toe clamps down at the bottom. They're little uh, made by Mighty Bike. They're called pitfall clamps, and they have um, 
a little bit of a bite at the bottom of the stock, and I'm going around roughing it, and I measured it all beforehand, but I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to hit. If I blow it off here, you can see how close it got. I can't see. Uh, here, blow up the glass real quick. Blow up the glass. All right, there, no. Right there is the clamp, and you can see we're about 10 thou above it with the machining operation. Checking these holes, making sure they're the right diameter. We're a little bit under diameter, so we're looking at opening them up. We're just checking them with the bore gauge here and the calipers. So I think what I'm gonna do is swap out this uh, chamfer end mill for our quarter inch three flute flat end mill and come in and do a, another touch of the wall in here to try to open that up just a little bit more and then check it one more time and see where we're at. But we're shooting for four, three, seven, five, and right now we're about two thou under. So let's see if we can get that where it needs it to be. What are you getting? 0. 0.749. 0. 0.749. Okay, so with no thou. No. I mean, it should be right on. Okay, let's do that quick. So we gotta take our little pit bull clamps off. Show me one of those. Let's see how those work. Yeah, I swapped out the bolt. So I have like two or three threads, but that's plenty for just this little part. Let's get a look at this last one you got in here. Okay. So it actually pinches over and down. So it's nice, it pushes it up against our datum face here and our bottom datum face. Okay, so up one is all done. That's not how I expected it to sound actually, the way that clanged. Well, yeah, I'm gonna take the bandsaw now and cut this off so I can separate them. And then you can see we have these holes underneath here. We're going to do the same thing we just did with the stock on uh, op one. I'm going to replicate that for op two. So I'm going to flip this over up against the back face here and then clamp it down here. But you're just going to do one at a time. Yes, just one part at a time. So Keegan's been making a bunch of these nose gear parts over on the Tormach. Got the lower drag link here. Uh, there's another one, he's made a couple. And the Tormach right now is a little bit of a bottleneck for our machining process. So we're trying to work with some outside machine shops to make some more of these nose gear parts. Uh, I've been making drawings here, dimensional drawings, so that we can communicate all the tight tolerance dimensions to the machine shop that we're working with. And that's important because all these parts have to fit together as an assembly. If you don't pay attention to the dimensional tolerances, uh, you could have whole patterns that don't align between two different parts and then they wouldn't fit together and that's obviously a problem. So you really have to pay attention to that and I'm trying to make sure that's all good on our uh, dimensional drawings. I'm not the world's best draftsman. I did do a little bit of uh, drawing uh, back in industry, but I'm a little bit rusty at it. So I've had to refresh myself on all the nomenclature and everything for uh, dimensioning and tolerancing. So that's been kind of fun. But yeah, we'll get these drawings wrapped up and then we'll send them off to the machine shop we're working with. We're actually gonna have a dedicated video talking about these parts and working with an outside vendor, but stay tuned for that. So you finished so, up your soft jaw half there? Yeah, this is all finished up. I just have to take it off and then I'm gonna install these back in and then actually pocket out what I need to make the part. It's getting a little late though, so we're probably gonna head home. Raz gonna throw the vlog together and then I'm going to work on some more tool path things. So that was just a quick day in the shop. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like this style of content, leave a comment below. Let us know. We might do some more of these in the future. Otherwise, we'll catch you guys in the next video. We'll see you next time.
Finished the design review for this thing. 